Welcome, uh, everyone, to this uh, web chat. Um, I'm Louis Horn, and I'm currently the co-chair of the NCCDH board. And uh, this is a real pleasure and an honor to both hear from Trish and Camille and from the audience of, uh, of practitioners, policymakers, interested parties, um, educators, uh, practitioners who are also uh, committed to um, equity and uh, to the health of our, our public and the health of our communities. Uh, I'm an Indigenous person, and uh, this uh, pandemic has given me an opportunity to uh, um, reflect on uh, the underpinnings, to reflect on the issues that have brought us to this place. Um, as well, it's uh, an opportunity as an Indigenous person to look at our values but to uh, also look at what is our purpose in all of this. What is our role? What is our, the opportunity? Um, I don't believe we will get back to normal because I, uh, as an Indigenous person, didn't like normal very much. Normal, uh, as we used to know it, was hard for Indigenous people, was difficult for marginalized communities, uh, was uh, um, it was always a, a, years and years, lifetimes of trying to raise your voice and feel heard. Um, and I don't think this is uh, uh, should we should go back to that. Um, the, I was in Asia for three months, uh, from mid January to just the end of uh, of March, and uh, so I saw the pandemic. In happening in Canada from a distance. I also experienced what it meant in a different cultural settings. What I see in, um, as a future is not, uh, unfortunately, I would like to think that it's, we're going to return to a, a calm, that we're going to return to a, uh, uh, a state or a condition, a reality uh, where we are well. I, I hope for that. Uh, I offer tobacco for that, but unfortunately, uh, that might be too opt optimistic. Um, I think this, um, because this is a matter of privilege and power, I do believe that uh, what this, the urge is going to be to restore that power, and so institutions and individuals, communities with privilege, are going to want to protect their privilege, uh, and institutions are going to cater to that. Um, population public health of marginalized communities is something uh, we talk about and um, we're it's not this is not an opportunity to continue to talk about it we should have known this as a society as communities as organizations we should have known uh, that this is going to happen and that this is going to affect and more people from uh, uh, marginalized communities are were going to suffer and feel the loss in a deeper way. Uh, why should we know this? Because it's happened before. This is not the first time. And the new normal is that it will happen again uh, because of uh, the relationships that we have not sustained or that we're not taken care of. Uh, so our institutions uh, need to rethink their purpose. And I think our, uh, I see a, the new normal, um, if, if there's such a thing as a better normal, um, but uh, the fact is, is that I'm, as a, I'm a little, I'm pragmatic, but also I'm cynical in that the money that we're seeing now is going to be a tax on the poor in the future, because those with uh, the money, those with the affluence, those institutions, corporations, and individuals are going to want to protect their assets. They're not going to be generous with their assets. Uh, and so, so the needs of uh, those the marginalized individuals, those with uh, current and future um, depleted um, conditions or suffering the impact of this, are not going to be resourced. Uh, and we're not going to realign our institutions. Um, there's, there is that opportunity, but that is going to be a, a grand uh, plan that's going to need restructuring of all the uh, 
the systems and including ourselves as public health practitioners and those in, uh, interested in public health um, and wanting to do something because it's not a time to talk about it anymore. It's a time to do something. And the solution to me is that it's a, we need to strengthen the communities to have them have, give them the local capacity through the relationships of community to the power of community through the uh, assets of community to actually attend to issues as they emerge and have the resources locally. I was in Vietnam, when I was in Vietnam, I saw elderly people who were not affluent, who were poor, because there's very, very few social services um, in Vietnam. I saw uh, many people, uh, elderly, marginalized people, uh, say no to the government assistance because they felt that uh, someone else needed it more. And so they did without. They didn't optimize the situation to take advantage, to, to restore their privilege, or to feel entitled. Uh, and that's a new mindset. That's a different paradigm of community. Um, and so um, this is going to take some sacrifice, um, but sacrifice not for ourselves, but for the sake of others. So. That's just my opening thoughts on the, the realities we're facing. Uh, thank you so much, Louis, for um, sharing those opening thoughts. And <laughs> I'm back in. That's great. Uh, so, Louis, I think you, between you, Trish, and Camille, you've really provided us the foundation for some thoughts about um, where we go from here. And I think, Louis, you also bring in some of that global perspective.